from the VMware campus in Palo Alto, California. It's theCUBE, covering women transforming technology. Hi, Lisa Martin with theCUBE on the ground at VMware in Palo Alto at the third annual Women Transforming Technology event. We're excited to welcome to theCUBE Caroline Hubbard, an analyst at LinkedIn and the founder of Threadbare. Caroline, nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. So you, as young as you are, you're a speaker at this event. You spoke in the Emerging Leaders track. Tell me uh, the name of your session and yeah. what some of the key messages were that you delivered today. Definitely, my session was called Stand Up, Stand Out, How to Become an Advocate for Change in the Workplace. And my session detailed sort of my experiences thus far navigating corporate America, not only as a woman, but as a person of color, and some of the really eye-opening experiences I've had in terms of th the toxic cultures that are rampant in our organizations across America. And um, through this experience, I learned really valuable lessons. And two of those lessons are that your sort of performance and how you're perceived can only take you so far in an organization, ultimately, if you're not in a place that values your identity or values you for your differences, not just in spite of your differences, then your chances of success are going to be limited. Um, and if you allow toxic cultures to eat away at your own perception of self, then you're going to be in an even more dangerous position. So I sort of talked about how I learned those lessons and provided a framework for which we can all go back to our companies and bring awareness to issues that are affecting underrepresented people. How did you hear about women transforming technology? Yeah, so I've, uh, since I've moved here 10 months ago, I've just been taking the city by storm, networking, joining lots of women's groups to just try to find uh, women with similar experiences as me. You know, I'm from the East Coast, so I don't really have that many friends or, or a, a network out here, and that's what I wanted to build. Um, and so through one of the women's groups I'm associated with, um, I, I was speaking with a friend who was like, well, you should check out this conference. And um, so I did that. I went online and I connected with one of the program leads here, and we were able to talk a little bit my, about my experience, and I was invited to speak. Fantastic, yeah. and now you can say you've spoken at an event where Layla Ali spoke this I morning. <laughs> That's an honor to say that. It, she was so inspiring because you know you look at a woman like Layla, who's right. who you think is just born with confidence and, yeah. and courage, and she talked about how the, a lot of that is true, very innate, yeah. but there are times where she kind of has to recheck, kind of yeah. do a gut check and, and say, all right, I, I feel like I'm kind of knocked back a bit. Mm -hmm. I loved her recommendations for you know, like the Boy Scouts, what always be prepared. But yeah. that preparation is really key. Have you found that to be something that helps you yep. um, kind of harness your inner mojo, your inner absolutely. confidence to be able to, you know, whether you're speaking at Watermark or you're yeah. here? Yeah, absolutely. And I, well, I come from a performing arts background, and so I spent a lot of time on stage, and I have just found that throughout my life, um, being on stage energizes me, and being able to connect with people and be fully transparent is something that's really refreshing. And um, But with that comes a lot of preparation, and I've spent hours, actually last month when I did a similar talk, um, my mother and I were up until 5 a.m. the night before a big speech, just working and, and making sure it was perfect and deliver the right message. So I definitely agree, preparation is always key. It, it helps you feel confident. But like she said, there are times when sort of preparation isn't enough and you just feel a little bit unprepared or unconfident and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, what really matters is how you sort of bounce back from those instances in which you don't feel as confident. Yeah. I agree, I, I, th I felt very um, validated yes. <laughs> with a Layla Ali <laughs> thing. Sometimes I don't always, don't always feel my best. Right. So tell me a little bit, before we get into Threadbread, which mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about, a little bit about this program that you're in at LinkedIn, where you yeah. get to, in in finance, you get to you get to work in different right. parts of the business. Yeah, it's a really unique program. Um, it's a two year long program for students, or for people directly out of college, that gives you a lot of exposure across the company. And so it's technically under the business operations organization. So your first year is split between rotations in sales operations and business operations. And then the second year, you can have more of an elective choice where you can sort of dabble in product marketing or corporate development. So it's a really unique experience in that it allows you to see multiple parts of the business. And currently, I'm on the consumer product growth team, which uh, is responsible for getting people to use our app. And I also focus a little bit on our SEO strategy. So it's really opened me up to the world of tech and how large scale enterprise companies work, which has been exhilarating. What have been your, your experiences in terms of the diversity 
Uh, right. Not just at LinkedIn, but right. as you said, you know, you've been in the Valley now for about 10 months. Yeah. What are some of the observations that you have made? Yeah, I think that a lot of the workforces, actual workforces are reflective of the actual diversity that's in the city. And if you look at the city, first of all, it's not very diverse. And so it's kind of impossible f for the organizations to have that same diversity. So um, it's been a challenge. I think that LinkedIn has done an incredible job given the fact that there are not equal amounts of multiple different demographics. Um, and I, I think LinkedIn is very conscious of the problem and we're actively working to solve it. So I, I feel good about that. Um, but I, I have noticed that in terms of gender, in terms of race, um, not everyone is represented on equal levels. And representation is so important because for other people who are coming in future generations, you know, you can't be what you can't see. And so if there aren't people that look like you, you're going to be discouraged from pursuing an opportunity there when that opportunity might be perfect for you. So I'm really empowered and, and passionate about try to increase representation for all people in, in these organizations. It's refreshing yeah. to be at a conference like WT Squared because the accountability is so key. And yeah. what they announced this morning with VMware investing $15 million into an innovation lab for women's leadership, the fact that they're together expanding the Stanford mm -hmm. and VMware relationship that's been over the last five years, but actively going to be looking at what are these barriers, yeah. the diversity barriers that women are facing, how do they identify optimal ways to eradicate those barriers? Mm -hmm. Because VMware knows, and the McKinsey report that was actually cited in the press yeah. release that they came, went out with this morning, Companies that have more diversity at the executive level are 21% more profitable. Yep. So they're understanding this is going to not just be, you know, benefiting our culture and diversity or our, or our chief people officer HR Absolutely. function. This is actually something that will benefit the entire company. Yeah. And what does this company deliver? Technology that other businesses and people use mm -hmm. to better our lives. So they they get that, and that's that's saying refreshing yeah. is kind of an understatement. That is, yeah. <laughs> it really is nice to see companies that are willing to go, hey, we, we want to know exactly what these problems right. are so that we can then be strategic in right. how we can solve them. Exactly, it is refreshing. And I think that more and more companies are realizing that diversity is not a luxury or just sort of a platitude. It's something that is intrinsic to the business and to the health of the business and the retention of employees. And um, as more and more people begin to realize that, I think we will get better at increasing representation down the line. Uh, you know, I talked with a lot of women today and wanted to get their thoughts on mm -hmm. The Me Too movement, Time's Up, Absolutely. in the last six months, th that erupted on the scenes, yeah. likely, unlikely alliance with Hollywood. And the, the resounding opinions have been, actually, that's momentum that we can take advantage of. We should be leveraging this because when you have a platform that's that big and that global mm -hmm. for an issue that affects every industry, including us in technology, mm -hmm. that they actually saw that as, as kind of an elevation of the platform. Yeah. I'm curious what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, I actually spoke about Me Too and a couple of other social movements in my talk earlier. And you know, one of the reasons I started my blog Threadbread is because I started to realize this really unique cultural moment in which I've emerged into the workplace, which has been characterized by these social movements. Um, and a lot of these social movements have been galvanized through social media. Social media has been able to bring so much attention to important issues and shift public perceptions. And so with Me Too, you know, a movement that uh, was founded by an African-American woman in 2006, and then it sort of gained more momentum in 2017 when Alyssa Milano tweeted it out. And then to have a month later, Jackie Spear, Congresswoman of California, introduce the Me Too Congress Act, you know, change is happening at such a rapid pace, um, more so than it ever has in the past. So I'm really excited to be a part of that, and I'm really excited that we are seeing um, this much progress on, on this rate. So we I, I need to keep that going. We need to keep it going, absolutely. T tell me a little bit more about Threadbread. Yeah, so Threadbread uh, started in 2014 just as sort of a fun personal blog. My friends and I were getting our first internships uh, at the summer after our freshman year of college and we were all in different industries and couldn't really or didn't know where to go in terms of where to get advice about what to wear. And of course, like we want to make a good impression. And so I started just creating outfits, dressing my friends up, uh, telling them, you know, this is what you should wear when you go here or, or there. Um, and 
it sort of turned into this sort of personal branding as a young professional kind of blog. And I started writing more about what are some of the experiences that young people have directly out of college? What are some of the things they wish they knew before they started their jobs? And then I restarted it when I entered uh, the, the work world now. And because of what's happening in society, I wanted to shift the attention to focus on these important social issues, such as sort of women empowerment, uh, the representation of underrepresented minorities. And I've been able to have a lot of great dialogues with people that I know and people that I have just met who might have opinions that are different from me. Um, and I think those are the most interesting ones because they're the learning opportunities. And so it's sort of transformed into this story space where we can consolidate information and learn from each other. I love that. You know, one of the things that I thought was really cool when I walked into the event today was there's a headshot area. Yeah. And um, there's a LinkedIn, uh, there's a resume writing clinic and a LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. clinic as well. And you kind of think those are really foundational pieces yeah. to help someone, you know, have a, a professional looking photo that doesn't have like somebody's <laughs> arm that you cropped out, Absolutely, right? Yeah. Or, you know, a, a strong LinkedIn profile, especially if you're young, yeah. um, maybe just finishing um, with school and don't have mm -hmm. a ton of experience. Those are really important foundational elements. And it sounds like what you've done with Threadbread yeah. to advise young people on what, how should you look professional. Mm -hmm. um, th that's a really cool thing that you've Thank done you. there. It's an area where you might think it's a small thing, but mm -hmm. I think that can be very impactful. Yeah, it's kind of like the things that nobody tells you <laughs> once you go in. It's just, we're trying to capture all of that knowledge in one place and share it with as many people as possible. Yeah. yeah. So if you look down, you know, mm -hmm. finishing in the next, what, uh, year or so, yeah. your um, two-year program at LinkedIn, yeah. what, is, what do you think, what direction Where do you think you want to go in? Well, I love LinkedIn because, and when I interviewed, I actually said that I was like the physical manifestation of LinkedIn. Like I am a networking person. Like I loved connecting people to opportunity. And I love LinkedIn's message of trying to create economic opportunity for the global workforce. And I think that it's really rare that you find a company that's for profit that also has this really social impact and mission. And I, I want to stay in this space as long as possible. Um, but you know, years down the line, I could envision um, myself being an entrepreneur and starting my own company to focus specifically on problems affecting um, people of color and underrepresented people around the world. I, I think that that's what I've identified I'm passionate about and that's what I want to pursue. I, I can feel that from you, so <laughs> I think I th definitely entrepreneurial. Thank you. It, kind of in, in summary, what are mm -hmm. some of the things that you're going to be taking away from this third annual Women Transforming yeah, Technology event? Yeah, absolutely. Well, from the keynote earlier this morning, it's about sort of listening to the inner voice inside of you, always finding that inner warrior, as uh, Leila Ali mentioned, because I think that's so important. I think, you know, life is about just having good days and then having days where you're encountering adversity and it doesn't matter uh, how much adversity happens to you, it matters how you respond to that. And so always l leaning into that inner voice and then using your voice to empower other women around you who might have similar experiences but who don't necessarily know how to navigate the same situations is where you can be most helpful. So supporting women and, and always finding your inner strength is what I'm going to take away from today. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to borrow that from you. That was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> well, Caroline, you're going to sure. be a big star. I can oh, already tell. It's really you. nice to hear someone that's so young that sees the opportunities here hmm. and wants to very naturally make a difference tonight. You're thank one you. to watch for sure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We want to thank you. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE. We are on the ground at VMware at the third annual Women Transforming Technology event. Thanks for watching.